So today we're going to talk about the proximal humerus plating system. I think you'll notice that this is a very comprehensive system. It's probably as comprehensive as you'll ever need for any solution. There's three basic categories of plate. One is a straight plate with 95 degree screws proximally. Another one is a straight plate as well with 130 degree screws. And then there's the alpha plate, which has variable angles to each of the screws as far as inclination and trajectory, as well as dedicated bends in order to adapt the plate to the anatomy of the humerus. Today, we're gonna to be focusing mostly on the delta pectoral approach because this tends to be the workhorse approach for the majority of fractures, especially with complex fractures. So I'm just feeling for the coracoid process and my incision tends to start just lateral to the point of the coracoid process and extends longitudinally and laterally along the delta pectoral interval. Okay, so we're gonna make a skin incision along the delta pectoral interval and it's gonna extend down to the anterolateral approach for the humeral shaft. So the bicipital groove runs right in between the greater and lesser tuberosity, and that's generally a huge landmark for the placement of this plate. This is the entirety of the insertion of the deltoid. Now, as well, you'll see that as we release it and retract it further, it's also a very broad insertion that takes up almost the entire lateral cortex. When placing an alpha plate, the block that guides your locking towers has a little peg on it that mates with the plate and allows you to find the right position for it. Next, you screw on the guide. And then I'll oftentimes put the inferior most locking sleeve in. So remember, there's two sleeves. There's an outer sleeve, and then there's the inner locking tower. And the purpose of that is to be able to have a guide for your screw trajectory, even when you remove the locking tower. I'll retract the radial nerve, slide my plate down inferiorly, and then place it basically using the superior portion of the plate behind the deltoid into the subdeltoid space. And generally, you can feel a natural spot where it belongs. Lateral to the pec insertion, medial to the deltoid insertion, and distally almost directly anterior on the humerus. I'll generally shoot a wire in the inferior most hole of the proximal segment and I'll shoot a K wire in and take an x-ray and make sure that that trajectory of the wire is aiming right at the calcar or the inferior most bone of the surgical neck. As a counterpoint in order to be able to reduce my fracture and at that point we'll hold the reduction using some K-wires. You'll see that there's K-wire holes along the proximal guide block, as well as outside the block. But in general, it should sit well medial and anterior to the radial nerve. So now we're gonna start completing our fixation. I'm using the blue locking towers in order to place the 4-0 fully threaded screws proximally. So in this case, we're gonna put in 4.0 Cancellus fully threaded locking screws. They're the blue screws, which means you're gonna use the blue tower and the blue drill. The drills are calibrated, so you're usually able to tell your screw length off of the drill. However, there's also a depth probe that can be used, which is a blunt tipped device that inserts into the sheath and will also give you a depth measurement. It's blunt so you can place it up against subchondral bone and get an accurate measurement. After getting a couple of points of fixation, usually two to three screws, I like to start pulling K wires out in order to give myself more room to complete the fixation. And generally at this point, what I'll do is I'll remove the K wire that's through the tower and go ahead and drill for that screw. There's a laser line on the screwdriver shaft that I use as a guide to know when I'm about to lock into the plate. And that's the point at which I use a hand screwdriver in order to final tighten. We're also going to demonstrate the use of the gold screws. They are 4-0 partially threaded screws. 
I tend to use them when I want a little bit of a larger caliber screw. We'll use the yellow locking tower and the yellow drill. Once you've got enough points of fixation in, you can also internally rotate the arm without losing your reduction, and it'll make it much easier to work without having to fight the deltoid consistently. So at this point, presumably, any extensions into the shaft are reduced and fixed as well. You may even choose to put some lag screws in, and we're just gonna use a couple of non-locking and a couple of locking screws to finish our fixation distally. So there's two options. There's a locking tower, and there's also a handheld soft tissue protector. And there's two sides. One is for non-locking screws, and one is for locking screws. The locking screw side conforms to the hole and allows you to drill at the nominal angle. The non-locking side allows you to vary your angle. And for non-locking screws, I like to use this guide because it allows me to change my angle, especially because this is a plate that changes angles itself. It allows me to be able to shoot into the shaft at whatever angle I want. Additionally, you'll notice that the oblong holes themselves at their superior and inferior extents have threads in order to insert locking screws. In this example, we've put a locking tower into one of the oblong holes at the inferior most extent, and I'm placing a locking screw. These are green. Here we've placed locking towers along the shaft and the drill bit is calibrated to allow me to quickly measure and place the last few screws.